So I hope the people are staying in the house, except my friend uh, Charles, who is a super angel. Um, you are interested in becoming a business angel. I just want to make sure that the audience <laughs> is the correct audience, or are you curious how to be a business angel? Um, so that, that, that's, that's the idea. Anyway, there's a gentleman there sitting right in the corner there, Charles, my friend, all the way from the US. Offline, you can go speak to him. He can give you good, good, good tricks. We have to respect the most experienced people, right? <laughs> All right. So can I see a show of hands? Who is here? He was thinking for a long time, hesitating to be a business central. Can I show, show a hand? Three, four, five, good. I like, I like, uh, don't be shy. And the lady, even on the back, you can have a seat. <laughs> the question was, how long have you been thinking to be a business angel and you're thinking about it and you have not stepped in? That was the question. Okay, well, uh, welcome to the session here. So one thing I want to make sure that you understand where I'm coming from with this presentation, I'm not gonna teach you how to evaluate the company. I'm not gonna teach you how to do due diligence, etc. All those things, there's amazing, amazing information, be it at the WBA Academy, I think there's a, a traction, uh, a session uh, in parallel that Bybus is giving. There is in your own country, uh, a BA, maybe Confederation or BA Association, and you can actually look at it, but you'll be amazed. You are blessed by the WW search something, and you can search any class you can have a look at. So be curious. So today, in my humble way, I want to share with you my personal experience on how I became a business angel, and I hope it speaks to you. So there's a lot of pitfalls, there's a lot of passion, there's a lot of regrets, there's sometimes hesitations. Uh, if you're married, I can assure you that sometimes you have to talk to the wife about the money that you, uh, think about the money that you earned, you did not steal it. You worked very, very, very hard. Very, very hard for it. Be it an executive like myself, where I came from, be it um, an entrepreneur, be it um, a banker going to retire, doesn't matter who you are, make sure that you have all those things in the back of my mind. And then when you go and take Green for go, you go. And then I want to share with you in my humble way how I became a business angel five years ago. Does that, does that make sense? Put the context into it. And don't hesitate to ask me questions because I'll be very honest with you. So let me go back and share with you my journey so at least you understand and you can relate. Each one of you can relate his own personal journey. So I went to school, I graduated from Portsmouth Polytechnic, I was an engineer, uh, and my career started at IBM. And one day, completely by accident, I found myself in a sales team. And since then, for 35 years, I've been selling. And what I was selling, bringing bleeding edge technology from US to EMEA, and Michael was talking about the channel, sales, is it uh, going to an enterprise, is it going to a service provider, is it going to system integrator? Should we do white labeling? Should we do an OEM contract? Et cetera, et cetera. So that was the fun part of it. And most of the company I've chose, some of them might relate to you. One of them that I've learned a lot and influenced me to be a business angel was Ascent Communication. Ascent is written there. 1994, the beginning of the start of the internet. These guys, did the technology that already existed. It's called ISP, the Internet Service Provider, and the company was called Cisco. Cisco was putting routers, and if you remember the earlier part of going and doing a dial-up into an internet ISP, you could hear the, the modem. You remember that, right? So that already existed, but yeah, especially people of a certain age. The younger generation, I think there's a lot of youngsters around the room. 
they, they for, completely forgotten about that. But what's interesting about Ascend, they did not invent anything. They just looked at the problem. Think about boxes and boxes of routers, and behind the routers, miles and miles of cables connecting modems. So a lady called Janet Simon, who was the CTO founder of Ascent Communication, visited the first ISP in the world called UUNet. If you recall how it started, AOL and MSN was trying to sell content. So when she saw this spaghetti, she called it spaghetti junction, she said, why, why all these wires? Why all these modems? Heat dissipation, you're paying the rent for the room, too complex if it breaks. So let me suggest to you something. I'm gonna open the Cisco router, I'm gonna look how much space I have in it, and I'm gonna insert a modem chipset. That's the story of a stand communication. Would you call that innovation? Maybe, maybe, because of the repackaging. So we started in 1984, we did $26 million in the first year. We finished at 450 million in the second year. 1.7 billion in the third year. And we went IPO onto the NASDAQ. And 18 months in a row in the fourth year, we split three times at the $95 each. Split twice again. And in 1999, if you are into the high-tech world, if you're interested, thanks to the internet, you can go Google it. Lucent Technology acquire Ascent Communication in 99 for $21 billion. So I was fortunate, I had stock, okay? But think about if I was a, an entrepreneur and I had that idea. Bless her, Jeanette, she did very well, right? So that's why I started thinking and saying, I'd be very interested to be sitting on the board when they're doing the M&A acquisition. It started in 99 in my head as a salesman. The next one, airspace. That was my last one before I became an entrepreneur and then a business angel. Airspace, do you remember 2000? Anybody remember 2000? What happened, the crash, where everything went south? These guys, airspace, again asked the question, why Wi-Fi in 2000 already existed but never made it big, wild in the enterprise everywhere, like today. That's the question they were asking themselves. They found the reason. They did a startup called Airspace. And we went after, again, we went after Cisco as a go-to market. We kicked their butts. The next thing you knew, 2005, that's why I walked in into Cisco via the acquisition. We did $16 million revenue and Cisco paid 850. So I said that Cisco, not because I wanted to, but because they gave me this uh, thing called holding golden handcuffs to stay around and be an entrepreneur inside Cisco. So they asked me to sell software. If you remember back in 2000, Cisco hated software. They were a hardware company. So I started selling software for them. And then I started doing the cloud orchestration software. Anyway, I left in 2013 with one aim. You remember what I told you? Some of you take one year to make a decision to be a business angel. Me, it's like the tortoise. It took me a long time to think. Maybe I should, it's about time I can do something. So in 2015, I left. And the first thing I asked this school to do for me, that was the best gift they gave me, they sent me to teach myself M&A and finance at the INSEAD at Fontainebleau. That was a useful uh, course that I did. And then I said, okay, I have money, I have brain, I have will. And then I went to my wife, including my kids, because they are old now, they went all through university, and I said, dad is putting some money on the side, and by the way, he's going to lose it. Just think about what I'm trying to share with you. Of course, my intention was not to lose it. My intention was, like previous companies, I want to do a multiple. But at the same time, I want to give back. 
I want to share my knowledge. I wanted to mentor. I wanted to coach. So everything I'm going to say to you, I'm going to share it with you in a couple of slides. So it's not just about money. It's about giving back, meeting an entrepreneur. It doesn't matter where he is around the world. And maybe influencing his destiny because he has a bright idea. He wants to be successful. But at the same time, he can actually create jobs as well. So a business angel is not just about a check. So there's two types of business angels. Charles, I will ask you what type in a minute. That'll be interesting. Robert, where is Robert? He left the room. Michael, I'll ask you the same question. You've done it. So you have what you call the jockey type business angel. Why the jockey? He's on a horse and he's got a stick and he's riding it to death until he goes and wins the race. And they have other friends, which you all have. They're bright guys. They're sitting at home, they have computers, they have maths, algorithm, and they have an Excel sheet, and they are like the casino. So it's called Business Angel a la Casino, where he's putting a spreadsheet, 100 plus deals. Well, guess what? Rumor has it, they're getting some money out of it. But me, in my humble way, I decided to be the BA, Business Angel, like a, a jockey. I get involved in everything that they, without being control of the company, of course. The entrepreneur, it's his own project. I'm just here to give him advice. It could be on go-to-market strategy, it could be on the valuation, it could be getting more money from my circle of friends, etc. So that's the type of thing I'm going to be sharing with you. So let me give you two slides to put it the context. As a business angel, you are going to meet an entrepreneur. So I'm going to share with you a couple of slides for another course that I gave to the entrepreneur. And this is exactly what I tell the entrepreneur. Why are you looking for money? Did you think that you can actually bootstrap your own company? So you ask the question. I'm not here to be a business angel that I want to have an opportunity and I want to really force him to have my money. So I'll ask him the question. And then I give him all the different questions. Did you, like Michael said earlier on, an entrepreneur, they really sharp, try to sign up a lot of clients before they leave their job. Because a lot of entrepreneurs come from part-time jobs. So I want to make sure that uh, they're doing the right thing. So look at the title. Instead of looking for an investment, look for a partner. So anybody knows here who Candace Johnson is? Yeah. Yeah, the IBAN uh, business angel, former president, and today she's the emeritus president, and uh, Peter Cowley is the current IBAN. She's right. A business plan, you'll be amazed as a business angel or a future business angel how many business plans you're going to be reading. And sometimes it's absolutely boring because there's nothing there. I swear to God, it's true and you will find, find it when you get on involved. And I'll tell you exactly the pitfall you're gonna avoid as well. But what's interesting is, most entrepreneur that impressed the hell out of me is the guy that have a very concise, precise, focused idea. And you can see almost on his body language that this guy is going to be successful compared to other entrepreneurs you've met. So there's a bit of science, a bit of gut feel, a bit of personal hunch as well. But then again, that's what the club later on or Business Angel will help you mitigate the risk as well. Uh, so I'll be talking about that later on. And the last one, that's why I tell the entrepreneur, at the end of the day, if you're asking for my check as a passive investor, I'm not interested because I really want to share with you my experience and give you some worthy golden advices to be successful. Anybody seen this slide before? Yeah. yeah? Okay. So we're talking about the first part of the entrepreneur journey. We're talking really as a business angel when you start 
this is the area where you're focusing. Sometimes you become a super angel. Sometimes a, a bus I've seen business angels going into a mini VC. And that's for the round A, round B, and beyond. But today, I'm only going to focus in that part of it, is the seeding. When you have an ideation, when you have an idea, and you want to help that startup to start. So this is the area, really, where I've been, on where I am today, and I wish to stay. I have no wishes to do other things but uh, be in that, in that area. And then I explained to him, ask yourself, Mr. Entrepreneur, did you look at all the different sources of finance? So the reason why I'm asking those questions, go ahead. I have no issue with that. I have a PDF format and give me your business card. I'll be more than happy to share it with you because I've been sharing it all the time. So no issue there. There's no secret sauce there. So I highlighted number three because I'm bringing the entrepreneur mind by saying, excuse me, did you come to talk to me first time or you already put skin in the game? Did you ask mom and dad? Did you ask brother, sisters, friends? I don't like, I've, I've refused many bright ideas, even if I regret, be careful, as a business angel, you will regret you did not put money in a certain project. That's the fun part of it as well. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. But that part of that, for me, is important. If the guy doesn't tell me that he believes so much into it that he actually broke the bank, he's saving and put some money into the project. So most of the time, it's not just an idea. There is maybe a pre-prototype, or there's a, an app. Even if it's not functional, he's going to show it to me. So that's the stage where I re I'm really interested. And then talk about Angel Investors, and that's where the clubs comes in. I'm going to explain to you who is Sophia Business Angel, and you'll understand exactly why you start alone, you think about it, you're likely to fail. The reason why you're likely to fail, in my culture, I say you cannot clap with one hand. You need a second hand. What does it mean? You need other peoples. You need other, other friends. The way I came in, in 2015, into the Sofia Business Central Club, like you, I paid 500 euro, and I was an observer for six months. I went to the pitches contest. I went into the deal flow meetings. I was trying to understand deal flow, what does it mean? I go to the internet, I got some bribes about it, tried to educate myself. But in the club, six months later, I understood exactly what are all the pitfalls. And a very important message to me, for you going forward, don't do it alone. Unless you have a lot and lot of money and you, have, <laughs> you want to gamble, you might as well go to the casino and spend it. So a club is very important. And I can share with you what SBA with IBAN do to help certain countries to form their own club. Um, last November, IBAN and GIZ, the German group, sent us, three of us, to Rabat and Casablanca in Morocco to help them start from scratch the Moroccan Business Angel Association. So we, for three days, we gave them a very intensive, uh, we went into the drilling of how they evaluate companies and how they do valuation, IP, etc. There you go. I tried to draw some uh, wings, but uh, I, I, I think it was, uh, I need to rework on that slide. So it's a business person like yourself, be it a lady or a man. And what we try to do is, when you say retired entrepreneur, is that true? Not necessary. I could have retired five years ago, but I'm not retired. I'm giving back my humble experience. I'm trying to challenge the entrepreneur. I'm investing in him. And what's important is the networking, the power of the network. Uh, two months ago, somebody came into an accelerator in the south coast of France. They came from Italy. They do this sophisticated AI bird strike system for the airplanes. You remember when the airplane lands or take off. Today, believe it or not, it's a very, very expensive that the airports are buying because it's mostly it's radars. 
and radars it's very complicated to analyze when the bird, what type of bird, when what type of uh, uh, noise you can issue over a loudspeaker to frighten them. What these guys are doing is one tenth of what uh, a radar is doing. Anyway, me as a business angel, not only I invest in him, not only I mentor him, but as it happened, I opened the door for him to do a proof of concept with Airbus. So think as you're going through the journey, what are you going to do for the entrepreneur? It has to be fun, you have to be transparent. Sometimes you have to tell the truth. Michael, you mentioned the word pivot. I can tell you a lot of successful stories where the entrepreneur, he was absolutely going in the wrong direction. I'm thinking about Fabio in Switzerland, the SBA funded him three years ago. He was going and we let him do it for 18 months. And when the cash was running out, we had a meeting, a serious discussion. But you'll be amazed how many entrepreneurs don't listen. They just shrug, it's my idea, it's my baby. And by the way, as a business angel, you have to have a lot of humility by saying, okay, it's your gig, it's not mine. But I've invested in you, so maybe you should listen. That's why he did. Same technology, same algorithm, but a pivot, you know, going the wrong direction. So that's the, all, the, uh, all the stuff that you're going to be learning with this. And like I said at the bottom, they're not motivated just about the money. You have to be really genuine how you're going to impact the entrepreneur with knowledge, with contact. And the only thing I always advise, don't fall in love. That's the only thing, it's a no-go. Tough, tough when you think about it. Sometimes you're gonna say, hey, I like this guy, I really feel for the guy. So make sure you have that distance, you're doing it for business, you're doing it for good, you're doing it for the investment, etc. So I think uh, my friend Michael uh, went through this slide and one of the things that I always tell to the business angel, make sure in general, this is the three buckets that you are trying to really, really comprehend when an entrepreneur comes with an idea. The market, because the market is so large, you try to understand what is he trying to solve for that market? Is there a problem to be solved in that market? Sometimes I get disappointed I'm looking at my friend uh, from Africa. I work with Tommy Davy. I don't know if you know Tommy Davy, yeah. the president of uh, ABAN, yeah. the African Business Association. We have exchange, and there's a certain countries that are still working just for the local region problem solving in that country. There's a lady from Senegal that was uh, accelerated in a scale up program in the south coast of France. It's for baby food. And as soon as she spoke, she said, I am sick and tired of seeing all the Nestle of this world, all the big corporations of this world, selling baby food as an export, very expensive to the African countries. So she said, I'm going to solve it, but not just for Cote d'Ivoire. I'm going to solve it for the whole Africa. So you have to be very ambitious when you see an entrepreneur thinking globally. And that's the message. I need to see the entrepreneur speaking globally. It takes uh, great guts, and, uh, but most of the startup, even in France, oh, nice solution. Oh yeah, is that for the Paris Metro? It's gonna work, 100%. But he didn't think, how many capital in the world do you know that they have a metro, right? He was not even thinking that way. So that's the kind of discussion that we have. So the market, the team, I think uh, Michael, you beat it to death there. The A team is absolutely, absolutely a must. You have an entrepreneur, he's the guy who's bringing the project, I call him the owner of the project, but I push back on him by saying, tell me about the others. Who are they? Finance, CTO, marketing, product management. And again, I go back to my earlier uh, comment, hand, Five fingers, they're different. But together, they have a function, right? So you have to be very humble by saying, 
I know that I can be the CEO of this company. I've seen situations where the CEO was so clever, he said, I'm standing back, but I'm bringing an external person to be the CEO. Because I don't have that type of skills to be a CEO. Founder, board member, co-founder, it's okay. So, it, 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 you know, thanks to the mentor, thanks to the business angel, he actually gets those advices. And sometimes it really work. And on the technology, uh, I think you, you really have to understand, you know, technically what they're trying to achieve from a technology perspective. All right. Does that speak to you? To some of you that are hesitating, you say, how am I going to go about? What are the reasons? The experience, you have something to bring to the table. I don't care what you've done in your life. You should be honest with yourself. If there is a value that you can share with others. I'm 100%. It could be financial expertise. It could be a go-to-market expertise. It could be uh, how to connect the debt by opening a, a certain partners for them. It could be the possibility of convincing the entrepreneur don't do it internally, but let's do it externally, because there's a lot of uh, team uh, dev up today, especially on the software. They're based in Poland, they're based in Romania, they're based, they're, it's amazing how, you know, just think about what you can bring to the table as a business angel, because that has a value for the entrepreneur. Doesn't matter what it is, sales, technical, etc. And the ROI, of course, we all dream to have an ROI. So let me ask you a question to all of you from, with your humble experience of the market. 10 startup, and you're gonna give them 50K each. You decided you're gonna invest in 10 startup. Show of hands, how many of those 10 startup do you think they're gonna make it out of the 10? One. 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 No, can you put the hand for one? Okay. Anybody else? So the one is the majority right now. No, no, you're not allowed to speak, Robert. I told uh, you and Charles are not allowed to speak. They can ask you a question afterwards about your experience. Excellent. So I think you guys studied the subject and it's very good. So what does that mean in general? I've been advised by my mentor five years ago when I started, you should not invest less than 20, 20, to have a hope of getting one big guy. I don't like the word unicorn because for me it doesn't speak to me, but at least one big ROI that can actually compensate for all your losses. So think about it, the risk. Because <laughs> I love, I love, I love your question. I love your question. I love your question. I love your question. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. The dartboard. You know, when you do flesh and you go for the bullseye, you're hoping that you're gonna have the bullseye. But what are the chances of hitting the bullseye every single time? even with my humble 35 years experience. So, to answer you in a very nutshell, I think it's a risky business at the end of the day. And most of the time, the market shift, the team explode. He was talking about the team. Many times, the guy who brought you the, the project, something happened to him. Anything. Divorce, it happened. So what are you gonna do? You're gonna try to glue it up? or how many startups you have to get involved with. It's a very challenging thing. Go ahead. Did that answer you, by the way? I have the book. Uh, but 
I wanted to share. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, David, by the way, he's a friend of our club. He, he comes once a year to our Sofia Business Central Club in Nice, and uh, he signed us his book and things like that. So we know exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. And he's a, a former president of the New York, yeah. and uh, Charles knows him well as well. So the number why I said 20 is because, like you are thinking to be a business angel, when you walk into a club, Somebody invited you to join that club, by default. You're not knocking at the club saying, hello, I have money all the time. Me is two friends that copted me to join the club back in 2013. So it was five years ago. And two years later, I became the vice president. And then last year, they gave me two years term as a president. The reason why? Because each, each one of you have the possibility of be, be being disruptive when you go to a club. You have to have that faith. So what I did, first thing I looked at the club, how it was running, I did not like the idea that anybody can do 5K, 10K. So I asked them for a minimum to make sense and to help the entrepreneur, a minimum of 25K makes sense. So as an example. For each year? Uh, each year, yes, once a year. Yes, once a year. Um, so that's one thing. Second thing, I found out that when the club, for fi we just uh, celebrated our 15th year. So we've been around for 15 years. And if you guys know France, it's the only club started 15 years ago, English. All our pictures, everything is in English. We have 11 nationalities in our club. So we pride ourselves we're the only international BA club in France. In France, there's 83 clubs. So you're not knocking uh, by saying, hello, I want to be a member. No, 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 no. If you want to be a business angel, I am sure in your town, doesn't matter where you live, doesn't matter where you live, in your town, there is a club. It could be two members, it could be three, there could be 300. Each town today have a business club. So LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, the power of the network all the time, network, network, network. And then a friend in general invites you to come in as an observer. Don't commit yourself immediately because you're enthusiastic, because you want to do it. Just be as an observer. Sit down, go to the event, go to the deal flow, see the entrepreneurs pitching in front of you. And then I remember, and all of you will remember, your first investment, always. And my pride is that I invested in a company that somebody says, all the club members, I'm not going to mention who, but Michael knows. That's why he asked me to, go, to come to his cybersecurity accelerator. I said, guys, a friend of mine from Cisco are doing a cybersecurity, it's called behavior analytics. This is pre-attack on a network. And they're based in San Diego. All my friends, which I respect and they respect me, said, Marcel, we're not going to invest. Do you know why? You're not allowed to answer. Do you know why? They said no. You will hear it before. Don't invest far away from your own local network, local town. San Diego is too far. Well, guess what? We sold it 18 months later with 25 RI to Webroot. Webroot is, if you Google Webroot, it's one of the company famous for, for cybersecurity. So it's not an exact science. Follow your hunch. And I'm sure you will see exactly what I'm talking about as you get engaged. And you, you will see, you will see. But go to a club. Don't do it by yourself. That's my... Uh... The last one, ask yourself, very important, if you want to be a successful business angel and a respected business angel, you are trying to bring positive change. It could be for a refugee camp issue. I'll give you an example. I'm mentoring into a, uh, an accelerator in France. The director there feels me because he's a business angel. He actually is um, opening a coding school in the camp in Jordan where there's a lot of Syrians and Palestinian refugees, as an example. 
And he insisted it has to be girls between 12 and 16. He has his own criteria. And he put his own money into that program. Why? Because he has an idea while those girls know how to code and get code, he can talk to all the startup in his, in his um, program to subcontract. So he's not just doing a code and a trainee and a diploma, but there's a job waiting for them at the end of the program. So the last one for me is honestly, philosophically, when you leave the room, think about it. Are you pre, what's the word? Convinced internally with your soul saying, I want to bring a positive change. But that's key for me in any investment we're doing, not to be confused with social impact. That's something different. There's a the vertical there, the funds are coming from Europe, and there's a lot of people good at it. I'm talking about a normal business angel that actually, if you look at my portfolio, it's across the board. Cybersecurity, cloud, AI, e-commerce, business intelligence. It's all across the road, because I, I chose to do that. And make sure when you go to a club, you are free to do whatever you want. The only regulation in the club is the ethics, conduct, because you're representing the club when you speak on their behalf. But where you put your money, in any club I know around the world, nobody's putting a gun on you and saying, make sure you pay this. It doesn't work that way. And that's what's nice about it. Are we doing good time? So be aware what a business angel is looking to invest in. And I think uh, some of this resonates with you in the earlier class uh, with Michael. And this is exactly what you're looking at. As far as the topics are concerned, this is irrelevant because each region have their own trend. Would you agree with that? Good. And of course you have a certain thing you're expecting from the team. This has to be clear. Uh, Michael mentioned earlier on, one to one with the guy who contacted you, the guy who's actually owned the project. But at the same time, you're checking the story as you go along because you're meeting the team. And by the way, a strong advice, do that because sometimes you hear different stories. Because the CEO, the founder has a personal agenda that the others were not aware of. We can tell you a lot of stories there as well. But you learn, you're gonna learn. As far as the honesty and dedication, that is absolutely a must for me, on the honor side. There's a problem, there's a delay, you know, delay happens. But I don't want to discover it, just because I've heard it. I want to hear it on a quarterly basis, usually we do a quarterly meetings, and on a monthly basis, a phone call, or a one-to-one -one over a coffee or lunch, how's it going, do you need my help? And by the way, as a business angel, if you really want to have a good relationship with the entrepreneur, and you want to be successful as a business angel, give them a couple of things to do in the next 90 days. Something that makes sense. I opened the door to Airbus for your proof of concept. Please go ahead and sign a statement of work and send it to the customer. I'm not gonna do it for you. I'm not gonna do it for you but I'm expecting you, you do it. Because the statement of work, when you write it, the company, because I have experience, the company reads it and says, most of the time, yeah, 90% of it is there, but let me change a couple of things. Because when you sign a statement of work, you know there's a purchase order or an intention to buy at the end of the process, as an example. So make sure, as a business angel, to give a certain KPIs and give them time, typically it's 90 days. Ha, ah, now the other around. What the team is expecting of you as a future business angel? I've highlighted from my own humble background, one of the thing, this one and this one. <laughs> 
trust and fair valuation. If the entrepreneur doesn't trust you as a business angel, we're giving him some hint you're trying to, excuse my language, the S word, <laughs> um, it's not going to go very well. On the fair valuation, the difference between a business angel and a VC, anybody can tell me what's the difference?